begin with an x-ray of the unprepared tooth. This start x-ray is important in making a diagnosis as well as estimating the initial measurement of the canals. Study the radiograph as a blueprint to establish the size, shape, and location of the pulp canal and their relative positions. For your first time, outline the coronal axis on the tooth in pencil using the coronal preparation slides as a guide. The axis outline for a maxillary canine is similar to an upside down triangle shape with the base of the triangle parallel to the incisal edge. Using a high speed fissure burr or round burr held perpendicular to the lingual surface, cut just through the enamel in the center of the pencil marked area. Do not force the burr. Extend the opening laterally to the designated outline by maintaining the point of the burr in the central cavity and rotating the handpiece toward the incisal so that the burr continues to parallel the long axis of the tooth. With a low speed long shank, number 4 or number 6 burr, depending on the size of the pulp chamber, Make a cut with the long axis of the tooth and cut directly through the dentin into the large pulp horn or the largest area of the pulp chamber. The burr should be used with a pull stroke from the chamber and out. Use the endodontic explorer to check for the canal. If the explorer meets constant resistance, the pulp chamber has not yet been reached. Continue drilling apically through the dentin. You will feel a slight drop as the burr breaks through the roof and drops into the pulp chamber. When the pulp chamber has been penetrated, probing with the explorer will often produce a catch along the ledges or overhangs created by the lingual walls or roof of the pulp chamber. Expand the coronal cavity access slightly. Avoid perforating the floor of the pulp chamber. Working from inside the chamber to outside in a sweeping motion, remove undercuts or lingual and labial walls of the pulp chamber. The axis on the tooth is extended more toward the cingulum. Additional beveling of the incisal wall is also completed by working from inside to outside to remove the lingual shoulder of the canal, thus allowing for the continuous access from the coronal cavity into the canal. Irrigate periodically to flush out debris. Fill an irrigating syringe with sodium hypochlorite and attach an irrigation needle, the tip of which should be bent at approximately a 45 degree angle to the long axis of the needle. The distance from the bend to the tip of the needle should equal 20 millimeters. For preclinical exercises, tap water should be used instead of sodium hypochlorite. Using this needle, gently flush fillings and debris from the chamber. The needle should fit the canal very loosely and the solution should be introduced very slowly so that it can run back out of the access opening and is not forced through the apex. The resulting cavity should be smooth and continuous, flowing from cavity margin to canal orifice. This is referred to as straight line access. Verify that you have achieved straight line access by rotating a file within the canal. The file should have direct and unimpeded access to the canal, achieving 360 degrees of unrestrained motion. You should be able to rotate the file 360 degrees about the cavity outline without encountering resistance within the pulp chamber due to ledges or ridges.